Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. All right, a couple of things. Um, this year is uh, 500 years since what is known in history as the Reformation. Martin Luther, a German guy, was the initiator of, of that process. And this is the uh, 500th anniversary of this year, 1517, uh, that happened. In a couple of weeks, I'll be in, um, I will be in uh, uh, Freiburg in Switzerland uh, with the European guys that I connect with at a um, special celebration for the... Um, for the Reformation with some very esteemed company with Archbishop of Canterbury and uh, N.T. Wright, any of you know that is, as Pope's special envoy and uh, a, a most wonderful man, the, the, the Cardinal of Vienna, he's a, just an incredible guy and Gianni Gaeta and a lot of other guys. Uh, we will be there <coughs> because there is a, uh, a celebration of this event. However, what's easily forgotten um, when we look back through history is what it actually cost to create what it is that we then have afterwards. Uh, the actual price of that for Martin Luther was he was under threat of death. They, they, there was an edict out from the Catholic Church tried to kill him. Uh, he lost a great many of his friends and it was, it was colored with struggle to the point where Martin um, struggled with depression and various things because he was pursuing what God had put on his heart but it was it was a very difficult journey. Now, what I want to say is 500 years on, there is a reformation taking place across the world, and the same struggle is going on, and the same things are happening. Friends are, are departing, and support is not always there from where you hoped it would be there. And as I talk to different brothers across the world, not just those people with all kinds of size of churches are going through the same struggle, because there is a reformation that is coming in, because in all honesty... Um, there has come a staleness and uh, a stalemate in the development of what should be a dynamic faith rather than a, rather than a static belief. And uh, we are part of that. And I ask you to pray for me. It's not always easy. Um, we're singing, I won't go back. Sometimes I'm very tempted to go back because I, I tell you, I know what to do. I know what to do to make things different. But I've tried to be a man of integrity and I try to be an honest person with you. And uh, that's not always easy because honesty and integrity are not usually the easy road because we all like the path that has no price to pay, no sacrifice to make. So please pray for me. Pray for those brothers. Uh, pray for what's happening across the globe in this Reformation because, uh, you know, in, in 50 or 60 years, people will be looking back and saying how marvelous it was and everybody will have forgotten what those who were in at the beginning paid to make it that marvelous. So we need to pray for strength. We need to pray for strength and courage uh, to see that through and uh, we'll, we'll let you know where we're heading as a house as we uh, can again some focus on, on our own process and purpose in that. So, okay, just a moment before we... We talk. Anybody here need a real miracle? Who, who, needs a, who needs a miracle? So we're just going to pray for you right now. I mean special. I'm not talking about, you know, just... Uh, I just need, you know, tomorrow I'm going to, to Marks and Spencer's and I'd like a parking place near the door. I'm not talking about that kind of miracle. I'm, I'm talking about you really need something to happen that is beyond your ability to manipulate... Um, but I absolutely, totally, completely, without one shadow of a doubt, believe that God involves himself in our life to meet us in those areas. And, uh, and I want to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, for those who have just indicated their need for something out of the ordinary, something that cannot be manipulated by human effort or achieved by human strength, I just release your, your spirit right now to accomplish and work and deal with those situations and bring about a turnaround and a miracle that this thing will turn around 
and these things will shift in Jesus' name and that your name will be honoured because of what you have shown yourself to do in these situations in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, it's, it's interesting tonight because I want to talk to you about something that I actually only talked about in September of last year. Um, but as I was just praying and thinking and, and seeing what I need to talk about, um, this, this kind of just came back into my spirit and I want to deal with it now. I need you to uh, just indulge me because I might be preaching to me more than I'm preaching to you. And if I am, uh, then you'll just have to love me for that. But I think I'm also preaching to you. But I think this is something very important for so many of us to get hold of. So what to do? What to do when what? What to do when God picks a fight with you? Now that might seem a strange thing to say, but actually there is biblical precedence for God picking a fight with people. Now, I believe for all of us there's a moment where God picks a fight with us. Now, maybe fight is the wrong word, but it catches your attention. Sometimes to use softer words means that it just goes over your head and you don't think about it. Uh, um, fight might be the wrong word, but, but, but he at least engages with us in a wrestling match. So what do you do when... God picks a fight. What do you do when God engages with you in a wrestling match and you know that what's going on inside of you is this profound sense of wrestling? See, there's an interesting story in, in the ancient book of, of Genesis in the Bible which illustrates this beautifully. And I, I just want to read this little story and then I want to talk a little bit. It's found in Genesis chapter 32, right in the first book of the Bible. And there is a context to this with the guy that's there. His context is um, life's not quite working out as he thought, expected, planned that it would be. And uh, in this moment, he has some things that are closing in on him uh, that he would rather not have to face, but he is going to have to face them. And therefore, something inside of him needs to change because he's a fugitive. And, and, and the the images that are painted here of like this thing happening in the night and in the desert and him being alone are all, are all aspects of f forget whether the story is exactly as the story was written. It probably is. But actually within the story, it's the points that are made within the story that are significant for us today because we're not Jacob. But these issues usually happen in, in a dark time in our lives. They usually happen when we're in the wilderness. They usually happen when we're alone and we can't shake them off. They usually happen when we've got to face something down that we don't want to face down because there are historic things that are connected to that which we fear. It usually happens when we've been run out of something and when somebody's chasing us. So, so this is kind of the context. So verse 22, that night Jacob got up, took his two wives his two maidservants and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. And after he'd sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. And this is verse 24. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Now, Jacob's got no idea who he's wrestling with. He doesn't even know where this guy came from, he's just suddenly found himself having to fight for his life, and he's wrestling with this guy. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Israel means prince with God. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. It's interesting how he becomes aware by the process that he has been involved in that God was the one who was fighting him, wrestling with him. And the sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. So he walked with a limp after that because his hip had been put out of joint in the fight. We might get to that. We might not get to that. But the point is God picked a fight with Jacob. 
Jacob didn't pick a fight. Jacob didn't start the fight. God picked a fight with Jacob. Now, it's fascinating that embedded within the word wrestle, and this is what I brought you in September, and this is what fascinates me. Embedded in, in the word wrestle is the word rest. I find that really interesting that as you begin to break that word down, which magically it will do at some point in the future, you will find that as you get to the middle of that word, wrestle, you have the word rest. Now, now to me, I, I think of King Arthur and the sword in the stone when I see this, because it's like rest sits embedded there, like the sword in the stone in the legend of King Arthur. It's like you know it's there, but how do you get at it? And how do you remove it from the stone? If any of you remember the story of King Arthur, there were lots of candidates who came and with brute strength and struggle tried to get the sword out of the stone but couldn't remove it because it wasn't upon them to remove the stone. They had not been part of what it was necessary to be chosen in that situation to remove the stone. And I see this a little bit like that, that you can't pull the rest out of the wrestle in your life just with struggle, no matter how great you struggle. And far too often, most of us never learn that, and we're trying to pull rest from the wrestle by struggling. Now, how can these seemingly opposite things be interconnected? Rest and wrestle, because they are opposite things. How can you rest if you're wrestling, but maybe how are you gonna find rest unless you're Wrestle. How, how can these two things that are so seemingly opposite be connected? Is there a process and, and a purpose to be discovered within this? Is actually wrestling a critical part of finding rest and that without the wrestle you don't find the rest? Is, is it an unavoidable part of our own journey to wholeness that we have to, we have, to have God pick a fight with us actually to help us discover who we are? It's not about punishment, it's not about judgment, it's not about God being angry, but there comes a point where we are struggling to really expose who we are and who we're supposed to be, that that, that uh, struggle is, is um, that, that wrestle is, is part of that whole process. Now, a couple of simple things. Wrestling is not struggling. Okay, it's two different things. Mo most of us might say, I'm wrestling with something, but actually we're not wrestling with it at all, we're struggling with it. And wrestling is not struggling. Struggling is when you do, struggling is what you do when you're desperately trying to get away from the wrestling that you're experiencing. So, you know, if somebody jumps on you, if I jump on you now, I'll tell you what most of you will do, you'll struggle to get away. That's not wrestling. You are not engaging with the process. What you're doing is using your energies to struggle so that you can get away. The problem is when God picks a fight with us, far too many of us struggle because we want to get away from what that's exposing in us, what that's challenging, the truth, the honesty that that's demanding of us, so we struggle to get away. And we run from the place because struggle is not wrestling. Wrestling is not struggling. Struggling is the refusal to accept that I must engage what I'm facing and wrestle with it for the reward that will come from it. Don't struggle. Stop struggling. Too many of you are struggling. Wrestling's good. Struggling's bad. All that struggling will do is make you escape from the situation, not embrace the situation, and therefore what needed to happen to you cannot happen. So, wrestling is not struggling. Worrying is not wrestling, okay? Now, that's a good one for me, because I am by nature a worrier, I have been all of my life. But worrying is not wrestling. You are not solving the problem by worrying. You're not solving tomorrow's problems by worrying. You're taking away today's joy by worrying. Worrying is not wrestling. Worrying is strife. Strife is this in the dictionary, vigorous or bitter conflict, discord or antagonism. Often our, wor our wrestling is, is translated in struggling or in worrying, but worrying is simply strife. Striving doesn't produce rest. So you can't strive your way into rest. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 27, 28. He said, what man, by worrying, can add a single inch 
or 25 millimeters or 2.5 centimeters to his height. You can't do it by worrying. Jesus also said that the lilies of the field don't become what they are by worrying. The birds don't get their food by worrying. We don't grow by worrying. We never grow by worrying. So worrying is not wrestling. You can't worry yourself bigger and you can't worry yourself better, okay? So worrying is striving and struggling is not wrestling. Now that begs the question, is there any true rest without wrestle? And it's a question we, we need to answer. Is there any true rest without wrestle? Do you have to wrestle to get rid of all that wraps around it so that out of that wrestle you come to rest? Because rest is not just the absence of conflict. If rest is the absence of conflict, just like peace, being the absence of conflict, then you're never going to have true peace and true rest because there will always be conflict. Forget around you, there will always be conflict within you. Just over things that are said, things that are done, things that you face. So if rest and peace are the absence of conflict, you will never have rest and peace. Rest and peace are the presence of God in the midst of conflict that cause you not by struggle and not by strife to be in a place of rest, but I propose to you that rest doesn't come without the wrestle. So, wrestling is when you take a firm grip on your opponent with the intent of bringing him or it or her, I guess, if we're going to be, going to fill everything to the ground. So, so in a wrestling match, the whole point of wrestling is to get a grip on your opponent. Okay? That's what wrestling is about. You have to get a grip on your opponent with the objective of bringing that person down to the ground. So the whole process of wrestling involves getting a grip with what it is that is opposing you. Now, if God's picked to fight, it means that you have to get a grip of God and think, what is going on? Because actually this might not be the church. This might not be that person. This might not be my boss. This might actually be God. He said, no, it was God if it was God. Jacob didn't know it was God until after God spoke to him and changed something in his life. He had no idea who it was. He just thought it was some random person wandering across the desert who jumped him in the middle of the night. And some of you have sat here thinking that you've been jumped in the middle of the night. Some random person, I'm going to propose something to you. It could be God. Well, I'm uncomfortable about it. I think Jacob was uncomfortable about it. Well, why is it so difficult? Jacob probably wondered why it was difficult. Because in the process of wrestle, coming to rest, something has to be changed. So... Wrestling is when you take a firm grip on your opponent with the intent of bringing him to the ground, so that might be God. This wrestle is different in that God picked this fight to bless you, not beat you. The whole point of God picking the fight with Jacob was not to beat him, it was to bless him. But if we don't cooperate with the process, sometimes we can feel more we were beaten than we were blessed because actually we jump out of the process too soon and all we say is I was jumped. Somebody picked a fight with me rather than realizing that the point of the fight is not to beat you but to bless you. This figure that turned up wasn't trying to beat Jacob, he was trying to bless Jacob and what's happening in your life right now is not about beating you, it's actually about blessing you. Now I told you the surrounding story is one of attempts to appease his brother, think of his brother who we've had to face and his brother was looking to kill him because he'd stolen his brother's inheritance. Think of his brother as representing the aspects of Jacob's life that were uncontrollable, unpredictable, threatening, unresolved, unchangeable. All that stuff is what he was about to face down. But the wrestle was not with his situation. The wrestle was with himself. His situation was actually just a bystander speaking to him from the wings. Now here's the problem. You think you're wrestling your situation, but your situation is just a bystander speaking to you from the wings. Who you're actually wrestling is you. All God was doing with Jacob was getting Jacob to 
fight himself. The stuff within him that was the reason why he couldn't come to rest, God was kindly and graciously blessing him by picking a fight with him so that he could help him deal with the stuff that was stopping him breaking out into who he was supposed to be. And so, Jacob says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. It's interesting that, you know, because uh, we, we think of bless as, oh, bless him, you know, bless her. This was, a, this was a really, a much deeper thing in the context of what Jacob meant when he said to this guy, when he's starting to realize something's going on here, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Blessing in those days was when, was when a greater person imparted what they had on a lesser person, so the lesser person received everything that the greater person had to give. So blessing is about actually empowering someone to prosper. So when Jacob says, I won't let you go unless you bless me, he's now starting to realize that actually in all of this struggle, the point of it might be that God actually wants to bless me and therefore I'm not going to let this thing go until I emerge blessed, changed. In that moment, he became a different person. Because the person he was wrestling, who he then realized was God, said, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. That word Jacob, for any of you that know about it, means supplanter or cheat or deceiver. And God said, what's your name? And he told him his name. And God said, but now you're going to be called Israel. In other words, in that moment of realizing what the wrestle was about and engaging with the wrestle and realizing that he was in the wrestle to be blessed, not to be beaten, actually who he was was radically changed forever. And I believe that's the same for you. I believe that's the same for me when we engage this process. The rest that you seek is actually within the wrestle that you face. So a couple of little lessons we're done. If you stop wrestling too soon, you may find rest from the fight, but you won't find lasting rest for your soul. I know people and watch the process happening of people running from the wrestle. All that happens is you have a temporary relief until the next wilderness, until the next dark night, until the next exposure, until somebody catches up with you and somebody finds out about you and you're back in the wrestle again, which all could have been resolved, but you wouldn't stay the course, you wouldn't stay in the fight, you wouldn't stay in the wrestle, you wouldn't allow yourself to be changed. Don't run from the fight. Don't stop the wrestling too soon. Find rest for your soul, not rest from the fight. That's the objective here, rest for your soul. Deep down inside, the matter done and dusted, and you come in a way with a clear sense of who you are to God, who you are in God, and who God is to you. And that is the objective and the process and the blessing of this. So I believe that in the midst of every wrestle, there is a rest for every one of you. I believe that God may not always be instantly recognizable, but he picked that, this fight to change who you are. I believe that fleeing rather than finishing leaves you unchanged, but it doesn't leave you unmarked. You'll still carry the scars of the fight like Jacob did. You'll still carry the bruising. You'll still carry the pain of the fight, but you'll leave unchanged. How sad that is if you leave the fight unchanged, but not unmarked. I believe that you let go, not because you're weak, but because you're blessed. When you let go of the fight, because it says, he said, let me go. The only time Jacob was prepared to let him go and let the situation go and let the wrestle go is not because he was weak, but because he's blessed. And there comes a point where you know, I have been blessed in this situation and I am changed forever. And one last thing. I believe that if you truly engage in this wrestle and the fight that God picks with you, you will always walk away with a limp. Jacob, from that point, walked away with a limp. He said, well, you know, why should that be? Well, it was forever a reminder to him of the night that he spent out there because we tend to forget 
the significant and the important encounters that we have in life. But Abraham walked away with the mark. Now, you know, if you are blessed by God by sticking this wrestle through and finding that place of rest, it doesn't mean that physically your hips will go, although, you know, I suppose Chris might argue different on that, that you walk physically with a limp. But you will have a limp. You'll have a limp because it exposes your own weakness. It exposes how you had a need. It exposes that in your own strength you couldn't do it. It exposes that you needed something beyond yourself. Now the one thing I ask in that before I close is this. There's this amazing verse that says from that point on, now I don't know if it was exactly from that point on, you know, the Bible's a funny book in that respect because you think, well how could it be because nobody knew, so nobody knew about that, only a very few people. But what happened within Israel, Israelite culture and Hebrew culture was from that point on, nobody ate the sinews and the muscle that came from around the, the hip because that's where God touched Jacob's hip. That is something that the church is often guilty of, which is a massive lesson in missing the point. A massive lesson in missing the point because it was like we are going to honor the memory of that moment when actually it was not about the memory of that moment. It was about the lesson of that moment saying that Jacob's wrestle was Jacob's wrestle. Not eating the sinew or the muscle around the joint might be very respectful and very religious but it's not going to change you but you'll think you're okay because actually what you did was you didn't do that. And we, you know, we worked and it, we were very respectful, very honorable. No, the point is not missing the point. The point is what about your wrestle? The point is what about your limb? The point is what about your life? The point is what about your name? What about your change? What about your revolution? What about your reformation? What about your desert? What about your night? What about the fight God's picking with you? So I'm grateful that God picks a fight with us. I'd rather him than anybody else. Because when he comes into that fight, that wrestle, he's coming in with one intent. It's not to beat you, it's to bless you. And when he blesses you, you can never be the same again. So I just want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that in your battle, in your wrestle, that you'll read it correctly. That you will embrace it fully because I know that out of that then you will find that there is a blessing that has changed you from who you are at the moment and all that you're struggling with to knowing who you are in him, who he is to you and to know that as a blessed person you have been empowered to move on to something amazing. What came out of Jacob was absolutely fascinating after this point. Talk about a change and a revolution that happened to him, it was absolutely incredible. And God wants to do the same to you and for you. So we're going to pray. Father, right now, I just pray for every person in this place. Uh, So many of us knowing that that we're wrestling. But so often wanting to misread and misrepresent that fight. And to escape it rather than embrace it because we didn't realize that you were picking a fight with us. But I, I just know tonight, Lord, I just know that you're trying to put some wisdom in us that by grace you picked a fight. By grace you've met us and got a hold of us. And that by grace you're wrestling us. And that by grace we can receive a new name. That by grace we can receive a blessing. That by grace our limp can be the testimony of how in the reality of our resistance you touched us and changed us and revolutionized us and set us on path to produce a nation which is what happened with Jacob. For something to come out of us that is expansive and amazing and wonderful, but for us also to live in a wonderful place of knowing your blessing and knowing your presence and knowing your kindness and knowing your grace totally and fully in our lives. So Lord, if necessary, let the fight go on. But what we say to you, what I say to you is I will not let you go unless you bless me. Help us to suck every ounce of your presence and your strength into this situation that we're not going to let you go 
and won't let you go unless you bless us. And so, Lord, we're believing for great things. I'm believing for great things in every heart, in every life, in every situation, because you've come to each of us individually, not just to Jacob way back then in history, in his desert, but coming to, to me and, and each individual in here with that same presence and that same promise. And so, God, we take hold of it tonight. Thank you for your blessing that you have promised is ours as we come through this wrestle. And I just pray that this will be a house of rest where every wrestle will come to the place of rest, where just like the sword being removed from the stone in the story of King Arthur, we'll remove the rest from the wrestle and that we'll realize that we're kings and priests as you've called us on the earth. You've, you've said that that's our standing in the earth, kings and priests reigning in the earth, that we would reign in life through you. And that's my desire, that's my prayer tonight for everybody in this house. Let it come, oh God. Let it, let, it, let it manifest, I pray, Holy Spirit. Just put this strong into our hearts. Break every stronghold. Break our resistance to, to yielding. E even, even melt our will. Sometimes we need to say, like you said, Jesus, in the garden, there's certain things that I want, but it's not what I want. It's about what you will, Father. Let that come through so that as we submit to that wrestle, we realize that there's life on the other side, that resurrection is the fulfillment of that wrestle, just like it was with Jesus at the cross. So thank you, this is a grace thing. It's a favor thing. It's a blessing thing. Help us to, to embrace that, Lord, tonight as we wrestle through to rest, total and complete rest, and peace in the depth of every soul, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all The Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. And why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.